And now, Tony Cornish Jr. with sports. Well, action on the high school football gridiron gets underway tonight at some select stadiums across the Wiregrass at Op High. Head coach Brent Hill will have the Cats ready to go against the Tigers of Laverne. Standing by live at OHS right now is News 4 Sports reporter extraordinaire Taylor Tannenbaum with a preview. Taylor? With a preview. Okay. I, I know you can't really see it at home, but I have the chills because I don't know the last time I was this excited about something. The high school football season, it's finally here. We've waited eight long months for this very moment. Op and Luverne, they're not wasting any time getting started. They're facing off in a regular season game here tonight at Chanel Lee Stadium, a rivalry game right off the bat. Two perennial powerhouses from Eastern Covington County. Op comes into tonight's game ranked fourth in class according to the Alabama Sports Writers Association preseason poll. They deserve that ranking coming off a 9-4 and four season that included a trip to the state quarterfinals for the Second year head coach Brent Hill says honestly last year isn't going to matter this year. He knows the target is on the Bobcats back. They lost some guys to graduation, but every single skill player is returning on offense, including running back Raheem Bonham and quarterback Orlando Lacey. Lacey is back after tearing his ACL midway through last season. So although the team may lack experience in some places, Coach Hill says they're bigger and faster. As for Laverne, they're coming off a five and six season that ended with a loss in the first round of the playoffs. It was the Tigers' first losing season since 2007. They have a new man at the helm right now, but he's a familiar face known in this area. Former Elba head coach Scott Riles is now the head coach at Laverne. He replaces Mike DuBose, who is now on the staff at Op. The coaching carousel goes round and round and makes this rivalry that much better. You add the fact that Coach DuBose, who was coaching there, is now coaching with us. And uh, Coach Riles is a great coach, and him coming back to this area and the wire grass is always a good thing. So it'll be, it'll be a fun matchup. Laverne, Op has always been a good game. And of course, the two schools met to open the season last year as well. Op beat Laverne in that one, 36 to 26. People are starting to get uh, arrive at kickoff. Don't forget, seven o'clock. Of course, uh, Taylor will rejoin her and get more insight. Uh, of course, tonight at 10, we'll have all the highlights coming away right here on WTBY. Having a few technical problems, but we will have highlights of that game tonight. Meanwhile, the enterprise. On Bounce TV, WSFA 12.2. Expect some high scoring games in off this season. The Bobcats are loaded with weapons. It helps when you have a quarterback who is a dual threat in Orlando Lacey. Just that. He can do it all for op. Hooking up with Marquavis Hall, who bobbles but hangs on. And then it's Orlando on the option. Calls his own number and he gets in the end zone. That's a place Raheem Bonham knows well. Seven touchdowns last season in one playoff game. Raheem the Dream will find the zone again tonight and up takes down the Tigers of Luverne 44 to 27. Not every game tonight counts in the And now Tony Cornish Jr. with sports. Well, the 2015 high school football season for both the Laverne Tigers and the Op Bobcats started tonight. It was time for both squads to finally see just how well they have progressed since last season. And of course, after weeks of practicing in record setting heat and humidity, let's head to Channel Lee Stadium. There was a familiar face on Op's sideline tonight. Former Laverne head coach Mike DeBose now on the Bobcats staff as a special advisor. First quarter. Action, quarterback Orlando Lacey back on the field after tearing his ACL last season. Finds pay dirt on the keeper, just taking his time, walking in the end zone. 21-yard touchdown puts the Bobcats on the board, 6-zip. Later in the first, Bobcats sticking to that run game. This time, they hand off to Raheem Bonham, and RB will rumble in for an 18-yard touchdown. Oh, Bobcats also succeeded on the two-point conversion. The home team now up 14 to zip. Laverne finally strikes at the start of the second quarter. First-year starting quarterback Austin Bryant tucks the pigskin and finds the end zone there. Orlando Lacey rushed for 148 yards and three touchdowns tonight. Talk about putting on a show. He threw for another 182 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, you get the picture here. Op goes on to defeat rival Laverne tonight. 40-40, 44-27, -40, your final. Yeah, we're heading in.
The kickoff of the high school football season is big, but it's even bigger when you kick off with a rivalry game. Op and Laverne playing last night at Chanel Lee Stadium. Both teams with coaching changes, but familiar faces. Former Elba head coach Scott Riles is now the head coach at Luverne. He replaces Mike DeBose, who is now on staff at Op. So the coaching carousel making this rivalry that much better. First quarter, quarterback Orlando Lacey back on the field after tearing his ACL last season. He finds pay dirt on the keeper. 21-yard touchdown puts the Bobcats on the board. 6-0. Later in the first, Bobcats, they stick to the run game. If it works, it works. This time, the handoff to Raheem Bonham, and he rumbles in for an 18-yard touchdown. Bobcats succeed on the two-point conversion. The home team up 14-zip at that point. Luvern does finally strike at the start of the second quarter. But Op goes on to win this one big time as they are expected to rank in Class 3A, 44-27, to 27, Bobcats over the Tigers. Yes, big, big, big win. Mr. Lacey getting it done in, in a big way. Now, Georgia. Lender. Play of the Night, sponsored by Southern Bone and Joint Specialists, providing excellence in orthopedics and sports medicine. Well, the Play of the Night comes from some Thursday night action, since we didn't have much tonight, thanks to Mother Nature. Up facing Laverne, the Bobcats already leading 14 zip. Tennis Washington takes the handoff right up the gut. Stiff arms, one defender finds his way to the zone. That's a 42-yard touchdown for Mr. Washington. <laughs> Op went on to defeat Laverne 44-27 when it was all said and done. Well, our more maiden boy. Back to the action we go with Op at Strong. Let's check it out. We got the fever! <laughs> Always they have the fever there at Antioch Municipal Stadium. Jeffrey Bush throwing deep to Darian George. Up. They're trying to answer here with the ball. And Hennis Washington gets the snap to Gregory House Hines. For Reginald Thompson will throw to Washington for the touchdown. And the cheerleaders, you can see, are fired up. Strong with the ball in the closing seconds. Going deep. Orlando Lacey there picks it off. And Lacey trying to take it back. He fumbles, puts it on the ground. Tristan Cobb recovers, and that sets up Strawn trying to get a touchdown late. But Op hangs on to win 21 18. I'm excited for the boys because last year, um, this game, they physically whipped us, and, and we responded back this year. And as you saw in the first half, we weren't clicking. Um, to have a chance to come back out of the half and fight back, I'm very proud of the way the boys are playing. gets the big W. Player of the Week, sponsored by Southern Bone and Joint Specialists, providing excellence in orthopedics and sports medicine. Now midway through the 2014 season, the Op Bobcats suffered a major setback. Starting quarterback Orlando Lacey tore his ACL, cutting the season short for him. Now fast forward to 2015, and Orlando is now fully recovered and back on the turf. And what a recovery it's been. Mr. Lacey made a huge statement against Laverne in week one. The junior rushed for 153 yards and three touchdowns, and he threw for another 183 and one touchdown. That's a grand total. Let me get my calculator out. 336 yards and four touchdowns in one game. Wow, the News 4 Sports Cam caught up with Orlando earlier this week, and he stated that it feels pretty good to be WTBY's first player of the week. For it means a lot because I had to put in a lot of work to come back from surgery and just come back out here and win and play of the week makes it a lot. I, I was nervous. I was nervous about hurting my leg again, but everything settled in, and the line block made holes. And Oh, if he's playing nervous, I don't want to see him confident. Tonight, Lacey and the Bobcats are on the road. Or we're on the road facing strong. A tough matchup indeed with both teams ranked in the state in their respective classifications. Strong, of course, in Class 4A, Op in Class 3A. Op wins the contest tonight. Close one, 21-18 over the Tigers. And at Kingston, the... And in our season premiere, we'll take you to Op to visit with former Crimson Tide coach Mike Dubose, an assistant coach at his alma mater, his Bobcats, hosting Hillcrest of Evergreen tonight. And Kendrion Robertson for Hillcrest is going deep. Tyrell Riley there for the touchdown. Nice catch. 26-21 off with the lead. 
Bobcats trying to work the clock. All they got to do is move the chains and run it out, and that's what they did. And the Bobcats get the win tonight, 26 to 21. In Brundage, the Pike County Bulldogs. And welcome back to Friday Night Football. I'm Tony Cornish Jr. Now, fans following up high were wondering if this would be another big rushing night for Mr. Orlando Lacey. Lacey torched strong for 105 yards rushing last week. For a few answers, let's check in with the one and only Mike Gerspan. AMG is standing by. He made a pit stop at Channel Lee Stadium tonight to take in the Bobcat Jaguar battle under the lights. Mike joins us now live from the Friday Night Football studio number two with highlights. Mr. G, take it away. Well, Uncle Tony, I'll tell you what, it was a battle royale. You know, when you have the opening regional contest like this one, a century of op gridiron action has taken place, and the Bobcats went, as we looked at, undefeated in regional play and making it all the way to the third round of the playoffs last year. Tonight, the Cats looking to get off to a W in this season's regional competition. So, Lydia... Let's take it to Chanel Lee Stadium in Eastern Covington County because you need to roar that big skin footage indeed, to say the least. An emotional crowd at Chanel Lee for this opening contest in the region. And emotions running high for one-time Capstone head coach Mike Dubose, who you see there, folks, now in his op assistant at his high school alma mater class in 1970. Jag signal caller. Jamichael King had some of the most proficient passing stats last week against Monroeville, but a different tale tonight intercepted here by Brandon Williams of Up. Now that sets up a short TD plunge by the gut by Hennis Washington. Two-point conversion fails. 6 nothing. Bobcats leading in this catfight. On Hillcrest, second possession, deja vu. King's pass intercepted this time by Raheem Bonham, and the senior DB goes all the way for off second score, 12-0 Bobcats. But on their third possession, Hillcrest came alive. This 12-yard run by Carithian Cunningham of the Beard it appeared to be a score, folks, but it was called back. Clipping, block in the back, no matter. Next play, King to Brandon Rudolph on a post play, the most basic of four passes. Second year hop head coach Brent Hill, what do you think? You know, I'll be honest, I'm thankful we're getting to play here against them. I've been very impressed with what I've seen from them. And guys and Lydia, without further ado, let's go to the Big Board Sports 4 scoreboard. As we see the Op Bobcats, woo, this was a tight contest, Uncle Tony, as you see on your screen right now, folks. The Cats of Op at home defeated the Jags of Hillcrest Evergreen. Speaking of sports, Uncle Tony, can you pick a contest with more action and excitement? I doubt it. Back to you in our Dothan studios. All right, thanks a lot. And welcome back to Friday Night Football. I'm Tony Cornish Jr. You know, last year, the Out Bobcats beat Geneva 30 to 13 in their annual Class 3A Region 1 game. Would 2015 represent a chance, perhaps, for the black and gold to claim a little redemption on the prep gridiron against OHS? Well, for an answer to that burning question, let's check in with the one and only Mike Gerspan. Mr. G joins us now live from our Friday Night Football studio number two in the city of progress. Enterprise, Mike, take it away. <laughs> Uncle Tony, as you say, the home Panthers had revenge in their paws following last year's drubbing at the hands of the Bobcats. And when you factor a team from Blue Collar Origins, Eastern Covington County, to the city of Two Rivers, folks, well, I'll tell you what, you have all the makings of a classic prep Donnybrook. So without further ado, it's time to roll that fabulous, yes, fabulous, pigskin futaji from U. Owen Memorial Stadium in the city of Two Rivers, Geneva. So let's go. One time University of Alabama head coach Mike DuBose now prowling as an advisor for coach Brent Hill and his young op coaching staff. On Hope's opening drive, QB in high school track star, Mr. Speaster himself, Orlando Lacey, fakes pass and runs a naked bootleg left side around Geneva's defensive end. Visitors on the march. And nothing wrong with Lacey's arm either. Here connects with Alex Wise on the Panthers' three yard line. From there, the ball is hiked to Tykeenan White in the Urban Meyer Big Ten Ohio State Buckeye spread offense. Touchdown and two point conversion. Good 8 0 visitors. 
and with the Panther offense finally getting in gear, William Acox pass unfortunately intercepted by LeReginald Thompson, and the sophomore makes a nice return after the catch. And when you have a good cast, well, folks, it's worth repeating. The drive culminates with Ty Keenan White going in from short yardage. It's quickly 16 nothing Bobcats in the first quarter. Up coach Brent Hill says this is an important region contest. Indeed, Coach Hill, indeed. Let's go to the big board four scoreboard for the final in this clash of the gladiators. Let me tell you what, those up Bobcats, they're for real, and they're prowling, and they're moving, and 60 to 42, and Uncle Tony, you know what that sets up next week? Let me tell you what, it's an intra-Covington County battle royale. I'm talking Eastern Covington County. I'm talking up where Andalusia is traveling to up next week at Shaneo Lee Stadium. So that's going to be a classic in itself. Important region contest, up on the move, to say the least. Back to you in our Dothan studios. All right, Mike, we thank you so much. The one and only Mike Gerspan reporting live for us from Enterprise. Op, again, remaining undefeated, and we'll, they will play host to Andalusia next week while Geneva travels to Sampson. Let's move on. All right, let's go. You hear the song. Let's go to OPP. The yeah, Bobcats already leading 32 to 8 in Geneva, but the Panthers about to make things closer with the run. Derek Freak clashes to the middle two-yard touchdown there, cutting the score 32 to 14. After stopping the Bobcats, Geneva on the move again. Check out quarterback William Acock. The Panther getting low, picks up the ball and turns it to a nice run there. Then Acock hands the ball off to Jackson Griffin on the delay. Number 34, shades of Bo running down the field. Off to the side there. Touchdown right here would come on this pass from Acock to Griffin. And uh, that's good stuff, guys. That's good stuff. Fullback pass to score 32 to 21. Oh, oh hang on. We're back in it, cuz. But maybe not. Are you down with OPP? Because I certainly am. 60 to 42, the final score in that game tonight. What a showing by the Panthers, though, there. That, yeah. that's, that's a lot of points put on Takes the Takes a lot of guts to come back. They've done that two weeks in a row now. Very yeah. impressive by Geneva. In op, the Bulldogs battling the Bobcats of op. Yeah. Andalusia's quarterback, Ethan Wilson. He'll take the snap, and he is taken down for a loss. Defensive struggle in the first quarter. Kenneth Griffin picked off by Darian Germany. So op's got the ball, and Orlando Lacey will hand off to Raheem Bonham. This doesn't happen often when the dream is taken down behind the line of scrimmage. And the loser gets the win over off. That's two good football teams. 19-16, the final. In And welcome back to Friday Night Football. I'm Tony Cornish Jr. Andalusia beat Op High 28 to 27 last season in a real thriller that was well remembered by fans from both schools. Tonight they met again in a non-region contest where Wiregrass Pride and bragging rights were on the line. The one and only Mike Gerspan was at tonight's game. Mr. G joins us now live from our Friday Night Football Studio Number Two with highlights. Mike. Well, Uncle Tony, as you say, the Andalusia Bulldogs taking on the Alp Bobcats may not be a region clash, but it's an intra Covington County annual grudge match. And it's been six years since the smaller Cats have defeated the hunker down hairy dogs of Andytown. So, without further ado, let's take you TV viewers to Chanel Lee Stadium and Op. So, Kenneth, roll that pigskin. Futaji, please. Yes, indeed. Now, with bragging rights, as you say, Uncle Tony on the line, a full house at Chanel Lee Stadium. And up coming up, you'll see Mr. Andalusia QB, Kenneth Griffin. He had a hot hand, folks, basically throughout the day. Here, drops back, throws a dart to Bridge Anderson. Ooh, just off the fingertips there. But it would be defensive struggle. Until early in the second quarter when the dogs, Kenneth Griffin, takes it here, as you see, folks. To Jamel Harrell, the junior would break it. One, two tackles all the way to the end zone. Pay dirt. Extra point, though, no good. And the dogs up six to nothing. Andalusia gaining momentum. Coming up 
Op quarterback Orlando Lacey hands off to Hennis Washington for some yardage, but it would be tough sledding on the offense in the first half for the Bobcats. On the defensive side of the ball, Bobcats' Darian Journey intercepts Griffin's pass, but the drive would die. As I say, folks, a defensive game, and you see Mike Dubose, former Alabama head coach there, and that's Mr. Bobcat himself. All right, let's go to the big board for sports scoreboard to see the final in this game. And Andalusia by a field goal over the home up Bobcats. As always, a tough, hard fought game, Uncle Tony. Three points separating both of them. Back to you, Uncle Tony, in our <laughs> Dothan studios. Thank you so much, Mike. We appreciate it. By the way, region play does resume next week for both squads. Op will host T.R. Miller, while Andalusia will travel to Bullock County. You know, last... to nothing. Only four coaches in the state of Alabama have won 300 games. Glenn Daniel, Buddy Anderson, Walden Tucker, and this man, Jamie Riggs, the Hall of Famer from T.R. Miller. He joined the club last week at home tonight. The boys from Bruton on the road against Op looking for number 301. Caleb Winton hands off, but the ball is on the ground and Ops to Kenan White recovers. Ops, Orlando Lacey taking the option to Raheem Bonham. Picks up 25 yards, same drive. New quarterback Lacey will keep for a three-yard score. They score first, but T.R. Miller heading back to Bruton with a hard-fought one-point win, number 301 for Coach Riggs. The high-flying Elba Tigers. Well, the 4-1 out Bobcats and the 5-1 Tigers of T.R. Miller were involved in a marquee matchup in Class 3A Region 1 on this Friday night. Both teams were sporting perfect region records as they hit the turf. The one and only Mike Gershman was at the game this evening in the heart of Bobcat country. He joins us now live from our Friday Night Football Studio number 2 with all the highlights. Mike? Well, Uncle Tony, perhaps this regional clash would go down as a showdown of the century in eastern Covington County. Now, the visiting Tigers from Pigskin Ridge, Bruton, Alabama, ranked fourth in the state, taking on the number six Bobcats at where else? You know, folks, I'm talking about Chanel Lee Stadium. So, guys, it's time to give our TV sports fans an opportunity to see a true barn burner Kenneth, what can I say but roll that big skin food taji, young man. All right, a large crowd, as I say, at Chinoli Stadium, an important region clash. And early on, it would be pretty much a defensive struggle here. Bobcat QB Orlando Lacey will come up. And as Mr. Lacey does so often, he options to Raheem Bonham for a good gainer there to the sideline. Now, several plays later, the ball is hiked to fullback Hennis Washington, who in turn makes yardage out of seemingly nothing. Bobcats on the move. On their very next possession, it's Mr. Alabama track and field. Orlando Lacey optioning to bottom, and the senior, he does what he does best through the T.R. Miller defense for a large chunk of real estate. And then an almost single wing formation, Lacey gets the ball in for the points. Two point conversion missed. Op head coach Brent Hill has the most respect for T.R. Miller head coach Jamie Riggs. Coach Riggs does a great job. I mean, he doesn't have 300 victories, you know, just out of nowhere. I mean, he knows what he's doing. He's a great man, great coach. Um, but we're looking forward to it. It's an exciting challenge. And Uncle Tony going to the final on Big Board Fort scoreboard, the visitors. They visitors a little vindication after the Tigers lost last year by one point. Well, turn the tables around, folks, because T.R. Miller by the count of 27 to 26 before the home fans head off. A little disappointment there, but a true test of will for both teams, and the team from Up Alabama made a strong accounting of themselves, Uncle Tony. So that's pretty much the way. Of course, now, T.R. Miller a little bit as far as in the driver's seat in that particular division. So back to you in our Dothan studios, speaking of sports. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. We appreciate it. Still a great matchup. And um, by the way, Op Bobcats continue region play next week on the road at XL. See if they can bounce back. Meanwhile, the four and one. Getting the big win in district play. Well, T.R. Miller's only region loss last year coming against Op, a wild 51 to 42 game in Bruton. Both teams, again, undefeated this year in region play, heading into tonight's date in op. Both ranked in the state's top six 
in Class 3A in Alabama. The Tigers fourth. The Bobcats are sixth. And the Bobcats always tough. That's Orlando Lacey going in for the early touchdown and leading Jamie Riggs. And the Tigers six to nothing. But T.R. Miller gets the ball to Markel Mitchell. There he goes. We hear he's going to be a scholar athlete nominee. He splashes in for the score. Splashdown, 7-6, Miller. And then Caleb Winton back to throw and fires a strike with a wet football to Shardy and Johnson, 14-6. T.R. Miller led 27-20. Opp drove the length of the field, scored with 12 seconds to go. And the Tigers denied Opp's two-point conversion attempt. They went for the win rather than the tie. I asked who made the tackle, and the coaches told me everybody. <laughs> Tigers 4-0 now in area play with a 27-26 win. All right, WS. And one more scoreboard for you. Opp beats Excel by a landslide 52-6. Goshen shuts out Central Hainville 40 to zip. That will wrap things up for next week. Now our Friday night pigskin adventure continues with a pit stop in Bobcat country. That's where five and two op was taking on five of the five and two admirals of Bayside Academy out, out of Daphne in another class 3A region one contest. Both teams with identical three and one region slates, just like Geneva at homecoming night, sold out stadium. But unfortunately the visiting admirals were in control of the high seas here. Bayside quarterback, you saw him there, a Andrew Citrin calling his own number and weaves his way to a Pay dirt point after 2012 visitors leading before halftime. Orlando Lacey options to Raheem Boham, Bonham, and the senior breaks a few tackles, but Opp would wind up having to punt. Also tonight, News 4 Sports wants to congratulate Caitlin Shivley. Okay. Hopefully we're pronouncing her last name correctly. As Opp High School's 2015-16 homecoming queen. Good for you, Caitlin. Looking excellent tonight. Exquisite. <laughs> Uh, plans to become a radiologist, I'm told. Anyway, back to football. When the final horn sounds, Op falls at home by the score of 42 to 18 tonight against Bayside Academy. BA laying it on the Op Bobcats during homecoming. Tough night for the Bobcats. Just like Drake, the Luke's Bayside Academy. How about that? As they trounce Op on the road, previously sixth ranked Op. 42 to 18. Well, they're still ranked six now, but I'm saying previously because that's what's going to happen. At Moore, no problem. 13. Up, meanwhile, winning big uh, against uh, Cottage Hill Christian and Arrington winning 51 49 against Cottonwood when it's all said and done. Close. 48 over Goshen. On now to Op versus Elba. The Tigers undefeated 9-0 on the season. Bobcats, though, leading 12-8 in the third quarter, but the Tigers will take the lead again. One-yard touchdown run from Cavosia Stinson, 14-12 Elba in the lead. It would stay that score until late in the fourth quarter. Op running the option, Raheem the Dream Bonham down the sideline, and he will go all the way for the score. Op leading after the two-point conversion, 20-14. So Elba gets the ball with under two minutes to play, trying to have a game-winning drive, but the Tigers will fumble it, and Op recovers, and that is your final. The Bobcats handing Elba its first loss of the season, 20-14. I'm proud of our boys, uh, and I'm going to say this, Elba's a class program. I, I think the world coach Rigby, I'm really proud of our boys. You know, we've had some bumps and bruises, um, but more or less, I'm going to tell you what I'm proud of. They're resilient, and we kept fighting. So, you know, you got, it's exciting to be a Bobcat. Exciting indeed. Congratulations to both of those winning programs. You saw the great example of sportsmanship there. Hey, that's going to do it for Friday Night Football. Get those scores out as soon as possible. Well, we start off tonight with a trip to Tiger Stadium, where undefeated Elba High was playing host to, yes, the 6-3 and three Op Bobcats in a non-region regular season finale. Op holds the advantage in this long Wiregrass series, but last year, the Tigers beat the Bobcats 48-19. to 19. What would the storyline be tonight? Op going up against an Elba hit squad that's only given up 78 points this season. That's right. For a few answers to that daunting question, let's head to Tiger Country right now, where Noah Mandel is standing by with all the highlights and lowlights from the WTVY Game of the Night. Game of the Night, sponsored by Southern Bone & Joint Specialists, providing excellence in orthopedics and Tony Taylor, medicine. what a great night at Tiger Stadium. A battle of dual-threat quarterbacks for both teams. You have to check this out.
Alba coming into this game undefeated and looking to jump into the playoffs on a high note. First quarter, Root Rigby faking everyone out, including me, on a quarterback run. He would take this all the way down the field for a 73-yard touchdown. Number seven not only has a killer arm, but can get down the get down the field in a hurry. Tigers go up by two and convert. Next quarter, it's Lacey's turn to make a run. This one for 36 yards. What a play down the middle of the field. Great job by the running quarterback. That would set up this nice six-yard QB scramble to bring the Bobcats within two. Huge out there. Halftime at Tiger Sam. Elba eight, up six. Third quarter, well, it's the same score. Quarterback keeper right here, and Orlando Lacey is out there looking like Eddie Lacey from Alabama. He is off to the races one more time for a 35-yard pickup, and then his dual threatness comes in. A high pass to Reginald Thompson. Go get the ball, young man. He comes down with it, 12-8 up, but now it's Elba's turn. Stinson gets the handoff down at the one, but he wants more Feed him, Coach Rigby. Cavassier Stinson from one yard out, and now he crosses the goal line. Touchdown, Tigers. Fourth quarter, final push for both teams. Speed option to the right side and a pitch to Raheem Bonham, the senior taking off down the up sideline. No flags on the play. Touchdown up. Bonham with a 40-yard run to put the Bobcats up late. Great job by the Tigers. Upset alert out here at Tiger Stadium. Head coach of the Op Bobcats told me they were going to treat this like a playoff game, and boy, did they. They're in the playoffs. Elba still in the playoffs as well. So we'll see a lot more from both of these teams in the next coming weeks. But for right now, out here at Elba Stadium, that is a wrap. Elba takes the first loss of the season, 20 to 15 to up. But for right now, we're done here. What else is going on in the Wiregrass? Well, we appreciate that. No, an exciting game by those Bobcats from up. Meanwhile, the five and four Enterprise. Uh, so anyways, area teams, they're getting ready for week one playoff matchups mm -hmm. like the Elba Tigers, who were also looking for another undefeated regular season tonight, trying to get that done against the OPP. I know, I was about to say, are you down with OPP? Bobcats, Tigers meeting tonight in Tiger territory. Elba would get the ball first, start driving down the field until they were on the one yard line trying to punch it in quarterback. Ramsey Rigby loses the ball. Bobcats recover. They weren't able to move the ball very far though, especially not with Kavasi Stinson on your team. This would have forced a punt, but the Tigers were called with an unsportsmanlike late hit out of bounds there. Coach saying there was no whistle. Bobcats didn't exactly do much with it. Now Elba with the ball back. Rigby gets the chance to redeem himself with a 78-yard TD run. Gets his team six points. The Tigers go for two, and they get it. Eight to nothing lead. Next possession for off now. They've got a pretty good QB as well. Orlando Lacey's his name, driving his team down the field. Fourth and six. Lacey finds Parker Bracky for the first down. Then Lacey will take it in himself for the touchdown. Bobcats try to go for two themselves, but they don't get it. The Elba still leads in the second quarter, eight to six. But this, it's a two A versus three A. Elba two A, off three A. But man, Elba was was the favorite in this one, and they lose twenty to fourteen. And that place was packed too. And, and it was a thriller of our game of the week. Game of the week. The Op Bobcats with reigning Fever Player of the Week, Orlando Lacey. Heading north for a matchup with midfield and the Patriots with the ball here. Ahmad Isaac to Darian Miller for the midfield score. Op with the ball now, Lacey. He is so dangerous whether he's running or passing the ball with the keeper to the left side. Nice pick up and that sets up a toss to the right. Lacey to Gregory House who will fly down the sideline. And how about Op? going on the road and coming back home with the big win, 49 to 20. The Luverne Tigers on the... The winner of this week's Hardy's Fever Star Athlete is Orlando Lacey of Op High School. Vote for the next Fever Star Athlete on WSFA.com. Introducing... Week. Meanwhile, in the Class 3A ranks, the Op Bobcats 
win tonight on the road against the midfield Patriots, 49 to 20. Congratulations, to head coach Brent Hill and his staff at Op. Op, by the way, hosting Gordo next week. It's time now for a quick time. Team of the Week, sponsored by Southern Bone & Joint Specialists, providing excellence in orthopedics and sports medicine. When going up against the number one ranked undefeated Elba Tigers, Op High School should have been worried, right? Wrong. The Bobcats stayed composed and stuck to using their dual threat quarterback to their advantage on the ground and through the air to win 20-14. The strong offense by Orlando Lacey and Raheem Bonham, combined with spectacular defense, is reason enough for the Op Bobcats to be named WTVY's Team of the Week. All right, thanks a lot, Noah, and congratulations to Op. Meanwhile, the Thank you, Stephen. Class 3A in Op, the Bobcats are hosting Gordo tonight and one of the state's top players. There he is, linebacker Ben Davis, number one on a lot of colleges' wish lists. He's a five-star. Gordo with the ball here, and Coy Chapman going 30 yards to touchdown Tyler Davis. And that linebacker Ben Davis, well, when it's the playoffs, you put your great athletes on offense, too, when you need to move the ball, just like Marlon Davidson for Greenville. Big Ben. With the touchdown catch, and Gordo goes on the road and wins it 33-14 over Op. Ellen? Last season, Op did something they've never done before. They advanced to the third round of the playoffs. That taste of the quarterfinals was enough to leave the Bobcats starving for more. The fourth-ranked Op Bobcats hosting the second-ranked Gordo Green Wave tonight for a trip to that third round once again. These two teams... They met, like Tony said, in the playoffs last year. Gordo won big 35-6 to in that matchup. But off, off, off to a good start tonight. If we can get the video rolling, Tony, I think we're going to have to... Okay, we're shaking hands. We're, we're saying there was a lot of good sportsmanship out there tonight. But off, they got off to a good start. Greg House takes down the quarterback to force the Green Wave to punt on their first drive of the game. Bobcats defense, they come up big on the second drive of the game as well, forcing the Green Wave to punt again. But the refs call running into the punter, and that gives the Green Wave new life. A few plays later, they give it to the big man, fullback Colin Herring, who punches it in from one yard out for the touchdown. 7-0 Green Wave on top early on. Op on the move now, looking to answer Orlando Lacey. He connects with House over the middle, but he coughs up the football. Xavier Lanier recovers the fumble, and the Green Wave capitalized on this one. On fourth down and eight, check this out. Chapman goes deep to the end zone and finds Tyler Davis for the 37-yard touchdown. Green Wave take the 14-0 lead at that point. Bobcats weren't happy about that. They thought he pushed off, but the touchdown would stand. It was 21-0 at halftime. Bobcats finally able to put some points on the board in the second half, but the Green Wave continued to roll. Your final 33 to 14. So Gordo is moving on. Op is done for the season. The Bobcats finish 8-4, and four, another winning season for the Bobcats and head coach Brent Hill. Tony. Thanks a lot, Taylor. Certainly appreciate that. Quite a game tonight in the heart of Bobcat country. Let's move on now. by number five. Now, the third best play of 2015. Uh, Bobcats coming into undefeated territory in Elba. Bobcats trying to knock the Tigers off. Orlando Lacey with the option play. Pitches it to his running back. He would take this one to the house 46 yards. Lacey took a monster hit before the pitch. Great heads up play by the quarterback to get the ball out of his hands and into his speedy running back. Can it get any better than that one? 